Speaking of open minds, I'm delighted to bring all the way from Germany to Outsiders a young girl who's gonna, who very much has an open mind. She's been mocked in Germany uh, in all sorts of dreadful ways, uh, secretly filmed and so on, for having an open mind. She's a young girl. Uh, she's coming to us. It's midnight in Germany, so I'm delighted to welcome and thank you for staying up so late, Naomi Zeipt. Naomi, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm fine. How are you? Oh, uh, we're really good and uh, very envious of how good your English is. Uh, now, Naomi, you spoke <laughs> uh, before Christmas at the Heartland Institute in America. I want you to take us through your story, how you were, like many kids today, uh, passionate about climate change. What changed in your mind? Take us through that journey and how you ended up speaking in America about that journey. Take it away. Oh, I always loved science. Uh, even when I was in middle school, uh, I was always heavily involved in science competitions at school. And uh, when I got older and when I was in high school, I started becoming more interested in politics as well. And uh, when I started questioning a lot of uh, mainstream politics, uh, I realized that I got a lot of backlash from uh, even friends and family and uh, so I, uh, I started looking into all kinds of political subjects. And at some point, uh, I came across uh, the topic of climate change, of course, because that is another topic uh, that is very heavily promoted as, um, uh, in, in a very one-sided way, as you know, in the mainstream media. And uh, so I looked into the science uh, on both sides uh, of the spectrum. And I realized for myself, well, actually, uh, what the climate skeptics or climate realists say makes a lot of sense to me scientifically. And so that's how I became really passionate about this topic. And so you went to the States. Now, tell us, uh, Australia's uh, Germany is particularly uh, strong on the whole climate myth. Just take us back to when you were at school, the sort of propaganda or what I would call propaganda, uh, the sort of education that uh, you experienced at school pushing the, the climate change idea. Tell us about that and what, how, how much pressure was there? Well, uh, climate skepticism or climate realism isn't even an option at this point. Um, there is no alternative view to, um, to, well, there is climate change and climate change is man-made. That, uh, that is just the mainstream view. And so uh, when we talked about climate change at school, uh, for example, in our uh, English lessons and uh, in biology, uh, whatever, uh, whenever it came came up, uh, the question was not, is there man-made climate change and um, how how much of an effect do um, human uh, carbon em emissions have on the climate? But the only questions that were asked really were questions like, uh, how do we deal with climate change? Um, what can we do at school to uh, contribute to saving the planet by, for example, not using plastic straws anymore? Which, of course, in the bigger picture is absolutely ridiculous. And if you were to question uh, the, the mainstream narrative, then you would be labeled a climate change denier or a climate denier, which is ludicrous. And uh, it's absolutely disturbing because, of course, to deny something uh, that is a very heavy insult, especially in Germany, because uh, it's supposed to remind you of the insult um, Holocaust denier. Mm. Mm. James. So, so what was the reaction then, Naomi? We have a very similar situation in Australian schools where they try and push uh, climate and environmental issues into pretty much every subject that they can. What, uh, what was the reaction when you started to try, if you tried to start to put other points of view into your papers or into your responses? Uh, did you find that your marks suffered? Uh, did the teachers persecute you? What, what happened? Uh, my uh, journey to climate realism, if you will, uh, really only started uh, after school mostly. Uh, but whenever I talked to friends, for example, uh, they would call me nuts. Uh, they thought that I was a conspiracy theorist and, um, well, they put me in the same basket, basically, as um, as people who uh, say that, I don't know, the Earth is flat. And for them, it was just, um, she's ridiculous, and um, 
she's just uh, too deep into this entire political stuff. And they already knew that I had different views from, that, from them on uh, socialism and all kinds of different topics, feminism. And uh, so at some point, I even had some very, um, very mm, almost tragically uh, deep uh, arguments fights uh, with my own family and with my extended family my mother is very supportive of me but the rest of the family isn't so much and um yeah that really led to uh, l me losing a lot of friends Naomi, you mentioned that uh, you're already thinking differently to a lot of kids your own age in terms of socialism do you see some links between that uh, uh enthusiasm for socialism and, and hate for capitalism and the enthusiasm also to embrace climate change and to re-engineer uh, economies in the West? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that this entire climate change mainstream narrative is not about science at all, because I would say that more than 90% of uh, the people, especially the young people who go to those Fridays for Future protests, they have no clue what they are actually talking about. Uh, they don't know anything about the science behind it. All they know is uh, this is the mainstream and they are actually scared, many of them, I think, that the planet is uh, going, that the world is going to end like 20, 12 years from now. And so um, this is not about science. This is about politics. This is about controlling us. This is about um, collectivism. Um, those protests, of course, they uh, they unite uh, the young people um, without really uh, providing them anything um, educational at all, uh, which is very sad because I think you could learn a lot if you actually looked into the science and if you did your research on climate change. And I think it's an exciting topic. Uh, but only if you approach it from a scientific angle and not with this kind of fear-mongering that's going on in the mainstream. Absa and you, it, just in your short life uh, time, would have seen all sorts of uh, predictions of doom and gloom that have been uh, proven to be false, and yet we can't even mention that. Now, what I'm interested in is how you've been treated. Of course, we've seen Greta Thunberg put on a massive platform, uh, nominated for the UN Peace Prize again. She addresses world leaders, and yet people say you can't criticise her because she is a child. But those same people have been very critical and often very vicious of you. Can you tell us about some of the uh, backlash you've had from, from prominent people on social media, people in the mainstream media? Absolutely. Um, in Germany, um, the media doesn't really seem to like me very much, um, <laughs> the mainstream especially. Yes, uh, I had a couple of incidences where they would uh, compare me to uh, a right-wing terrorist uh, in oh. national, uh, yeah, in Nazi Germany. I was compared to them um, in one uh, article. Um, then I had um, journalists appear um, at my door uh, late in the evening when I was alone at home to interview me for uh, almost an hour when I was completely unprepared and I was sick, actually. Uh, and they uh, wanted to paint me as an anti-Semite on TV, which is um, absolutely horrible because I never even call myself right wing. I only refer to myself as libertarian. And um, then just recently, um, there was a huge mainstream media outlet that wanted to um, to make a, 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 a really slanderous TV show and uh, article on the Heartland Institute, which is a, an American think tank that I'm working with right now. And they uh, they spied on us and when we were in Madrid. They had people there who uh, pr pretended to be our friends, essentially. And um, yeah, in reality, they were uh, spying on us, filming on us, uh, filming us with uh, cameras hidden in their pens. Oh my uh, God, James! Naomi, yeah. just 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 quickly here, 
What is it about your views, I mean, you, that, 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 that these people find so threatening that they would want to film you secretly, that they would want to spy on you, that they would want to defame you as an anti-Semite? Why is it that having these alternate views are so threatening to these people that they need to not only argue with you, but also destroy you? What's that about? That is precisely what shows us that this is not about scientific discourse, but really about shutting up um, the ones who have different views. This is about uh, taking away our freedom of speech. This is about promoting one ideology only and um, pushing some kind of totalitarian narrative. And I really do think that there is a lot of danger in this uh, entire agenda. Uh, Naomi Zayt, absolutely, you're an incredibly brave girl. Uh, you have a lot of uh, fans and support down here in Australia, and uh, there will be a lot of kids, a lot of grandparents and kids thinking, wow, uh, I wish I could be that brave, and maybe, hopefully, you will inspire a lot of them to be just that. Uh, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for staying up late, and maybe we can chat again in a couple of months' time. Thanks, Naomi Zayt. Thank you. That would be amazing.